Peter, thank you very much for coming here today. My pleasure, man. Um, looking forward to talking to you about your life, career, your process, and why you act. <laughs> <laughs> Once you say something's your next step, then you and others feel like you have to make that step. You know, honestly, obviously, this is what we should be recording and we probably will be, but like, the big fear is that you go somewhere and you fail. He wears the black trunks with red trim. His professional record, 34 victories with two defeats, 24 wins by way of knockout hailing from If you go to America, which would probably, like, for any actor, I'm sure that's where you want to be and where you want to make it. Would you say? Would you agree? But, like, go in there, you want to be fully ready to go there and be a success, make a success of it instead of going there and coming back. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, my, my theory all the time was to kind of build a strong repertoire of work in Ireland. Um, with film, TV and theatre and with, with enough of a CV and enough experience to be able to go over there. But as I said before, you, you want to be invited there. You know, yeah. you want to go there with work. So now since Angel of Darkness has, excuse me, premiered on American television, that's a step in the right direction. But yeah, you, you want to be you want to be ready. You want to be in the right mindset. You want to be prepared. You want to have your American accent completely down. You want to trust yourself. You want to. Uh, I suppose you have to have your fam like your your personal life as well in order. Yeah. You know, having kids that you can go, you can go. Yeah, but I don't know. If it's not, it would never be an idea for me. And like to be honest with you, it's not. I don't think that's the be all and end all. I mean, like I haven't even done that much work in the UK. Mm. Yes, you know, so uh, I still feel like that might be my road into further work. I mean, basically at the end of the day, all I want to do is work with people who are of the same mindset as me, who, you know, have ambition and who are trying different things and are willing to like, you know, give you a platform where you can kind of do... Yeah, try not, things. Not limit you, yeah. Not limit you, yeah, 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 and try things. Not that, like, you, you get, I've got an, I've, I've been given an incredible platform in Ireland, and I've been given great opportunities, and I'm, like, a very, very lucky actor in regards to, like, in Ireland, because, you know, Love Hate gave me that platform to be able to go on and have somewhat of a name, whatever that means, in regards to theatre, in regards to uh, TV and film work. It's still difficult to, to, to get parts in Ireland, but... You know, at this, this time in my life, you know, 36, you do start to think, as when you have young children, you think, what, what is the next step? You know, mm -hmm. what, where can I go or what can I do to, um, to really push myself and to f meet like-minded people who are kind of going in the same direction? Just to go back, like you mentioned Love Hate, playing that character, Fran, and having such like a cultural, I don't know, impact of, you basically you are basically a household name as Peter Coonan, but also as Fran. Yeah. What that was, what was that like living living with that character while the show was going on and in the aftermath of the show? I'm I'm sure it was a crazy. I don't know how to describe it. I'll surmise it in a word, but it was it was, it was a different experience. Yeah, it was it was amazing. I mean, I don't think you can I don't think you can uh, I don't think you'll ever really realise how incredible it was. Because like when you're when you're experiencing something at the time, you never really. It's enough. I don't think you appreciate. Not yeah. that you don't appreciate it. You do, but like when you're in it, you're just in it, and you're just doing it day by day, and you're, you know, trying to do the best you can. You're working with really good people, and you're kind of pushing yourself, and you're constantly wondering, alongside other actors, you know, am I good enough? Yeah. <laughs> am I good enough to be here? Like, should I be here? Should I, you know, am I all right to act in front of Aidan or Tom or? Robbie or Root or Root Bradley, all those amazing actors. Uh, but looking back, I suppose, um, and now, and like even still now that it's coming back on, it's like, I suppose it's, it's, it's incredible. It's with incredible, incredible pride and gratitude that I look back and go, like that was, that was 
that was blessed. Like that was something very, mm. very lucky. You mean I mean I grew up watching Scorsese and Joe Pesci. You know what I mean? And then like, without realizing it, you know, I did something. Not I'm not comparing myself yeah, to Joe Pesci, but you know what I mean? Like that kind of character. Like that's yeah. what you always wanted to be. I never saw myself as like Ray Liotta, one of those. It was the other guy. Oh, right. You know what I mean? It was the wild guy. It was the, the oh, guy yeah. who just kind of cracked the jokes and the crack. And I got to do that. Yeah. You know, unbeknownst to myself, kind of thing. Of all like of all the characters that were on the show, he's definitely he's probably the most memorable. Like <laughs> uh, Nidge, 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 and Fran. Yeah, you I know, you'd say hand in hand. Like, that, who do you think of when you think of the show? Yeah, and that's. I mean, that's something. Like, I I, I watched back Sopranos during lockdown, and I'm, I was on off the ball here talking about it, uh, putting it into the Hall of Fame. But like, I watched old footage of their uh, behind the scenes and uh, all the actors speaking about the experience of working on that show and what it meant to them and and that, that question always arose where did you think it was going to be what it was did you ever think it was going to be as successful as it was and I, nobody does at the time you just realize that you're in something that is special because of a like Stuart the, the characters the writing and then the other actors like you know mm. I still think to this day, I'd be very, very lucky to ever act in front of someone like Tom Von Lawler again, because uh, I learned so much from him as an actor and as a person, because he's one of the kindest, most generous people I've ever met in my life. But to learn, like to learn watching, standing in front of him was... Yeah. Because up to that point, you, had you done any real formal training as an actor? Bits and pieces, or was there any period of time where... You not for well, not, I mean, as a kid, I did uh, mm. like drama school out in Rathfarnham with Anne Cavanagh. But I mean, that was I did that huge departure from being on, in front of a camera and f on a set with a million different people, and you have to turn it on. Never well, between the canals. I did between yeah. the canals, which was like, but that was like different, that different, was different level of that production, was, I suppose. Yeah, well, it was raw. Like it was mm. like the, the camera was just around, and we were just we spent so much time in town, and it was like, I just soaked up the atmosphere or whatever but yeah i'd never had an experience like that i never mm. i'll never forget actually the first day i walked on to the lot in Ballantyre st john's on the grounds of the ga club that's where they had the buses like the double decker buses i'd been on a double decker bus like that where the catering trucks yeah, yeah. when i was a kid i did a tailor ad and me and my mom were on the truck together we had lunch and i remember being like this is mad like you know um but i remember walking on that day and i was kind of nervous but excited and I walked past, I walked past Tom's um, trailer, and I was like, kind of, you know, looking to be, you know, the kid like who walked past like a few times, looking to be invited in. And he was like, oh hey man, how's it going? And he was like, oh great to have you here. Like I saw your film, and you know, uh, he was reading this book, a Paul Williams book about you know crime in Ireland, blah blah. And uh, he was like, man, anything you need, anything you know, you ask me, no problem. You know, we're in this yeah. together, kind of thing. And. Uh, that was nice to, to kind of be uh, welcomed in that way. And Aidan Gillen was the same, actually. Aidan Gillen was unbelievably welcoming and unbelievably kind and generous uh, when we started shooting, because we did a lot together. And I was unbelievably nervous, because I'd watched The Wire, and mm. I was just, you know, in awe of this guy. And we did like three, three or four weeks in tent shooting. It was me and him, it was a lot of scenes together. And one day, me and a couple of lads were going down to Glendalough with a couple of friends who were over from Argentina, and I just checked my emails before I left, and there was this email from Aidan, and it said, how are you, Peter? I got a chance to look at Between the Canals. Uh, great film, great portrayal of Dublin. Well done, like, really well-made film. You're doing great, love, hate. It's a pleasure working with you, Aidan. Great. So, is it little moments like that, or is that, do you ever have, you spoke about, am I good enough to be here? Am I good enough to act with these guys? feeling like inferior is there ever a moment where that where you feel like okay i belong here this is this is it you know i'm not that whatever on a level but you know you say is it those little moments like that or will that that insecurity or will that always be there always i think yeah for me anyway but that's that wouldn't be that wouldn't be unique i'd say a lot of probably the best actors feel that way yeah i mean i don't know i, I it's it, it, it could be my process, <coughs> I don't know what it is, like, but I have it in everything I ever do, be it theatre, be it stage, mm. be it film. I just get a point, and maybe, you know, 
sometimes you do that to, to spur yourself on. I don't know what it's like for you, but like sometimes I get to that point, like in rehearsals with a theatre play, I get to a point where maybe a week in, you know, because it's emotion, it's emotion based the way I think about everything, the way I do things. You know, I try and prepare, I do what I can, but ultimately I let my emotions lead where I go uh, with another actor on stage or on film or whatever. That's just kind of how it works for me. So sometimes I think I question whether I have A, the training, mm. you know, even still to this day, sometimes I go, should I go back? Should I do, take a year out? Should I go and do, do uh, somewhere in RAD or somewhere in Drama Centre or something like that? So, but but do, I do constantly get to a point, be it filming or at rehearsals, where I think someone's going to come in and take my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing, but you know, it's, yeah. You know, yeah, I do, yeah. and I go, there's someone out there better than me. Or, you know, I remember the Borsa boy, and there was like 15 other lads younger than me who must have been looking at me going, why is your man doing that? And then you're in rehearsals and you're going, like, I could do that. And you like, and you're like that mindset. But I think that is the kind of thing that spurs me on because if I don't get that now, I feel like I'm being complacent. Yeah, it's like not being nervous before a not fight. Be, exactly. Whatever. Because it, as my, my mom said to me when I was like 10, we were on the way to uh, a Fesh Matthew up in Francis Street and I was doing a duologue with Sean Flanagan, who's in Foil Arms and Hog, comedy trio. And I was in the car and I was nervous and I just turned around and said, I can't do this. And my mom pulled the car over in the middle of the road and just went, right, get out. And I was like, what, what do you mean? She's like, get out. If you don't want to do it, go on. And I was like, what, what are you doing here? And she was like, well, if you're not nervous, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. If you're nervous, you care, use that and bring it with you. That's adrenaline. And she was an actress. She was an actress, yeah. And I'm sure your inspiration. Uh, probably the, the, re the reason you'd say? Why oh, ultimately, yeah, yeah, without doubt. When I grew up watching her in amateur productions, I grew up with O'Casey and Tennessee Williams and uh, Hugh Leonard and, uh, oh, you know, a, a plethora, Marina Carr, a mm -hmm. plethora of Irish uh, writers. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely the reason. It's definitely the reason. Play acting. So say, w would you say after Love, Hate, was it a conscious, like, it seems like you went more into fear that. Would you say, or was it, was it, I don't know. I think you've, been, you've steadily worked in film and TV, but also there was a lot more theater involved. Was that a conscious decision or did, did it just kind of happen that way? A, a bit of both, but I think, yeah, I think when I finished the I was A, conscious about not playing the same role again, mm. over and over, you know, because Lord knows when it, when it finished, there was a lot of you know, independent Irish movies being made where people would call you to play the version. hitman or the, yeah. a version of that. And uh, I, for one, didn't really want to, I didn't want to, not, not sully, but I didn't, like, I wanted to keep that where it was and not, you know, not sully it by doing more and more of the same thing. Mm. And also for yourself, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do something different and I wanted to, show other people, I suppose, but mainly myself, that I could take on different roles. And the only way you can do that is in theatre because you don't get the same opportunities on film. Film, yeah. Um, but also it's... Do you think if some of it was like, um, maybe getting an education that you didn't have, you know, because you're obviously thrust into the limelight, you're, you know, and then you go back, go back to, to doing theatre, which is an, almost an education, it is an education itself, and then that was where you would get your training. Do you think it, there was some needed, some part of that where you thought, I want to want to see what this is like? Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely, because I never, I never trained as an yeah. adult, you know, and still to this day, I still worry if there's something I should do. <laughs> Even the other day, I was going to email Tom and go, you know, can I ask you about your preparation? Like, and, you know, he wouldn't be the kind of person to ever talk about anything that he does in regards to prep or work in general. He wants to talk about you when you talk to him, which is the loveliest thing. But yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it allows you to get back to what's important and the most important thing. I remember hearing a quote from Peter O'Toole saying that like the most important or the best and most important work an actor does is him by himself with the script. It sounds a bit whatever, but it's, 
it makes complete sense and only when you do stage do you really get a chance to sit down and just read it i think film is different in ireland and film is different in general sometimes you do do that but you go through it in a different way and sometimes when you get cast in a film you might only get cast a month before it shoots and you just got to run through try. and get the scraps of what you can and then go in like i was saying to you earlier on it's like there's still times when i look back at characters i played on film and i was like if i was to go back and do them now and do the prep that i do now i, mm. I would i think i could do it better you know but with stage you get a chance to read a play over and over and over so what what is your prep and how is it different from from those years or so just say like on rafferty's hill on Raff rafferty's hill rafferty's hill yeah uh, Dead Rafferty, preparing yes. for a role like that, that like, there's one of the best performances I I've seen like, I've I've seen of you and I've I've seen in general like in the last few years on the stage. Like how do you how do you prepare for somebody so damaged like that? I don't know. Um, well, first of all, it's down to like, the director Katrina, um, who meticulously planned how we rehearsed such difficult uh, content, you know? I mean, incest, it's horrific um, material to be dealing with, but the way in which she dealt with, like, so we had five weeks rehearsal, which in theatre mm. is golden, as you know, you know. That extra week we just spent sitting down in a room talking about no stupid questions, say what you think, and just dissect what's going on with these people. And we had a doctor come in, Dr. Fitzgerald, and I grilled him grill them about everything about why someone would do this what would be the reason why he would do this and how would he feel and why would his father do that and um i suppose you just i don't know because yeah. if i remember he was the character who he knew what was going on but everyone kind of not laughed at him but he was really damaged by it and affected by it wasn't it yeah. he, he, and like and he wasn't in he wasn't really in denial like everybody else no but he like he had the strength it's like um like a mice and men, you know? Yeah, so yeah, like, he was like, yeah. It's like he has the strength to, to, to stop his father, but to, his mental capacity or his emotions have been beaten down by his father constantly. He, he's he's like a, you know, a, a little hamster in a wheel. Like, he, there's nothing he can do. He just yeah. has to survive day by day, and he, he just can't deal his emotions. He's, he's emotionally um, destroyed. So you had, like... So you had, you're saying like the luxury of those five weeks and preparation and, and all of that, that you might you won't often get afforded preparing for a film. Sometimes not in the yeah. detail that you do. Like, it, like and Katrina, the main thing Katrina does is is give you a platform and give like trust. So you know my main thing is when I go, especially with theatre and especially with a role like that is, I know we did our first run through, like run through of the play. And she was like, forget, if you don't know a few lines, forget about it, don't worry, just, you know, feel it out. I remember just going for it, like, mm. going for it and it being too much and knowing it was too much and feeling slightly embarrassed that it was too much. But her going, brilliant, brilliant. Now we know where we can go, let's see where we can go in between that, you know? Mm. And let's see where those emotions can be less, like, more controlled in you and then it's physical stuff as well. I worked with an amazing um, movement uh, coach who, the breathing, you know, there was a bit, yeah, there was, there a, was lot a lot of, a lot of yeah, breathing yeah. involved in his, his, his emotions and the pent up breathing. And, and normally like, as an actor, I felt I wanted to just feel the emotion and for it to be there. But this coach, this movement coach was like, sometimes you have to uh, let your body do the work for you. So that let your breathing create the emotion for you. Um, and sometimes I, I fought against that because I hadn't trained, so I hadn't had that experience with movement coaches and you know breathing and all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of reticent about yeah. letting that in. But once I did, and once you kind of feel it out, it was rewarding. But it's um, I don't I think I don't know. I don't never think about how you prepare for things like that. Or how you do? I, you just do it as it's going along, and that's what the beauty of theatre is. Someone's there to guide you. Mm. and you've got to find the right people. Working with a director. Yeah, working with a good director, yeah. Mm. But like, um, talking about training again, like, we, we we did a course together, and would you say that demystified everything? Like, you know, because um, it was with Jerry Grinnell, who's one of the most, the best acting coaches, well-regarded acting coaches around. Yeah. 
and would you say like it confirmed what you what you, what you already knew or you felt like not not that you you definitely took a lot from it. I took a lot from it. I think we all did, but um, you felt like okay now I've I've, I've seen this this the, the formula training and I know what it is, but it, like what I'm trying to get at did it demystify the whole thing? Did it did it like did you did you feel like I know this world, like I know this. It's not I'm not not that you're not learning anything new because you will always learn, but like you know I've done this stuff before. No. No, no. You found you found it. Uh, I found new new stuff that I didn't know. New. So when I talk about training, I think about theatre training. Mm. But that was uh, film training, and I never. It's a completely different mindset. Like Jerry talked about astrophysics, abstract like, concepts, yeah, yeah, completely abstract, and you know the idea of existing within a moment. You know, and like us now, like in the way I speak and the way I talk, I'm not necessarily thinking about the next thing I'm saying I'm just speaking as I go yeah and so that's what you're trying to find in film as a character uh, and that's how you try and play each character and when you really start to get really good at something like acting on film is when you speak the character as you would speak yourself in life yeah and for me I didn't realize that that was the case but also I didn't realize how you access that and how you try and access that is through calm. It's true. It's true process. It's true working. Mm. It's true repetition of of reading the script and knowing it back to front and inside out. But also then the other thing, the concept work that he spoke mm. about, which is reading it inside out, and knowing it so well, but then being able to let go of it. Speak it as if it's the first time yeah. you've ever spoken it. You know, the first time that really clicked with me, it wasn't until like months and months after we did the course was where. My daughter, I'd read it to Gruffalo, the story. I've read it to her every night for like a month, <laughs> every night. And then like, I could say to Gruffalo, I could tell the Gruffalo story 50 different ways, you know, yeah. and 50 different wo like ways of telling yeah. it, accents, you know, phrases. Yeah. And then I was like, that's what he meant. That's, yeah. that's really what he meant because I, I'd never got that because as you said, luxury and time, you're trying to cram and learn the script. You're just trying to get it in. And then get it out. And, and get no, it out. like you said, and being in the moment, being calm, when you're always thinking like, "Well, he's going to say this, I got to say that," you know. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like we spoke just before about it's, it's. That's why it intrigued me so much as to why you were interested in acting as an idea or a hobby, or whatever it was, and whatever it is, mm -hmm. because you love film and you love theatre and you love that world. But you know, it's that the readiness. You know, yeah. the prep is important. The work, is, the research is important. So like, you know, if you're playing dead in a, in a play, you read about how people are affected in that way. How someone who is abused, someone who is within an abusive family, but still manages to love the person who's abusing them. Like, how does that happen? And then you do all that work and you do all that psychological assessment, you do all that work. And then you have to trust that you've done that and trust that you're smart enough or um, perceptive enough or, or empathetic enough to, to understand someone's plight in that regard and then push that to a side, walk out there on stage or into a ring and then trust yourself. And it's the exact same. And just be calm. Yeah, it's the exact same in, in the fight. Train, prepare, strategy, drill it, drill it, drill it every day. And then when you get to the ring, just... But it's never going to be the same as how you drill it, eh? No, but you just rely on your instinct when yeah. you get there. You just yeah. hope that it's, that it's there. Yeah, that's there, and it will be there, and trust that it's there. And that's the thing I, I have to start learning is that, and I learned from my, my my better half Kim when I when I read sides with her, I do an audition, and she's just like, "Wow, stop trying." Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? She's got to the she's point. She's like, now, "Stop yeah. trying." Yeah, I bet. Yeah, like you I know, know, because she's like, she's yeah. like, it's there. Yeah, but you're just trying to impress me too much. Yeah. You know, and as an actor, and maybe as a person as well, there's times when I do that too much. Do you know what I mean? You constantly want someone to like you. You constantly want to be revered. You can't, like, but whereas, forget about that. Like, excuse the language, but fuck that. You know, that doesn't matter. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody's going to be there at the end of the day, except your family. Anyway, that's a bit much. But, like, just trust yourself and go there and let yourself... I bet you, uh, you know, uh, Kim, over the course of your relationship, has come... Like a, a semi, like a, 
like an amateur director or whatever, you know. I bet she can. She can. I bet she can pick up your cues just like that. She, well, she can pick yeah. up my cues. She can pick up my moods <laughs> <laughs> better than anyone. Yeah. But uh, no, but like I mean, go back to the Jerry thing. Um, there were there, there's parts of that that I'm still trying to learn. I did a class with yeah. Jerry during lockdown. I did it. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I constantly still t- t- try and do classes every time I read it. Do whatever I can. And I'm, I'm still not sure I'm good at what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but like. Uh, I did a class with Jerry and we were chatting through it and it's the same thing. I mean, during the class he was like, my daughter and my eldest Beth walked into the into the into the sitting room and she was like, Daddy, Daddy, I, I, I drew something. I said, Oh my god, it's amazing and he was like, See that? Yeah. That's it. Like that the purity of that, like, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing, she doesn't care. It's all just honest and free and open. Yeah. And like that's when you start to do that as an actor, that's when you Yeah, get, I think that you get like to flourish. I think my daughter was only young, but I just think like she can be my teacher acting coach because every action she gave was 100% natural. There was no learned behavior. Like no. there was nothing fake. No. So if she was happy with me, then I'd done something right. Or if she was, you know, yeah. laughing or crying, yeah. it was. And you see how they can switch that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, if only I could do that. Like, you yeah. Know? But like being a dad, and I was the same or go, going into it, like boxing is the same as acting. It's such a precarious precarious career like you never know when the next fight is or the next role is in terms of like that's that's a difficult thing as well isn't it that's a difficult like and to keep well I wouldn't say for you but like say when I like would I keep pursuing it you know when I was married and basically we didn't have no money nowhere to live and I'm I'm chasing this dream which I'd already failed at because I'd fought for a world title it didn't happen and I'm still doing it and the, it doesn't become like self-serving or what is the you know it's it's a uh, do you ever have those feelings or you know no, I know I, I know it's just no I do I know I know what you, I know what you mean I know what you mean you well like you're like I said it to Kim during lockdown I was like like am I just on a selfish voyage of trying to be great at something that's very difficult to navigate a career at is that what you're going to mean? Like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Are you doing? Are you doing it for yourself? No, do you mean, saying, or is you know, it? Like, yeah, but it, it is. It is because you never know. Yeah, there's. It's. Is it self serving? You never know. No, but you never know where when the next gig is for yourself. There's a lot of uncertainty. You know, in, yeah, and, and insecurity in, yeah. in terms of provide being a provider. Yeah. In, in a in a household, you know that kind of way as well. And do you just go and get a job, like, and you yeah. like, you know, because the times when I look and I go around, I go like, you know, the kids will see you not working for six months. Yeah. And they must be like. What does he do? <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean? Who is he? Yeah. He goes off some days with like a bag. They, yeah, well, I'm sure they'd, they'd be glad to start. Yeah, no, in completely yeah, yeah, in yeah. time. But you know, yeah. it's, it's funny, like I remember when, I, when, when uh, Beth was younger, she went to her friend's house for the first time on, on her first play date. And her friend's dad came in and she got real scared. Yeah. But she said to me later, she was like, you know, he, she was like, he doesn't dress like you because <laughs> he wears a suit. Yeah. He doesn't wear shorts and flip flops <laughs> or whatever, you know. But uh, and I do, yeah. I think, yeah. It's, and you know, the, the, not the worst thing, but that idea that like, is it just a self-serving prophecy? Or are we just trying to? Should we just be hard-working builders, or should we just like get yeah, but into the grit and work hard? Where you're doing something you're passionate about, so it gives you joy, and then yeah. you're you're happier better person for it you are but then when you're not working you know like the last six months for example there is definitely that thing that creeps into you that goes <sighs> what do you have why, any fears about why are you doing this yeah but say like coming out of lockdown or whenever that way be and this play is going to be staged again or film's going to be shot uh, How, like and i wasn't worried way? about it because luckily i was going into something else after this but from a theatre point of view, which is something that I missed, and I was saying to you earlier on that I've just started now to read plays with friends via Zoom or in person or, and last year I came to the idea that, you know, I've got to start picking plays that I want to do and characters I want to play and try and go to producers or directors and try and find if we can put this on ourselves. And now during this, I've realised that I have something, and actors have something, and directors and all theatre makers, we have something that we've never had before, which is time. Mm. And it's like, how do you use that to your benefit? You rehearse plays now, during lockdown, excuse me, you rehearse plays for the next six to 12 months, with, say, three plays, like a, a repertoire. 
repertory theatre and you rehearse them with three different plays with good actors, good people that you want to work with. And that, that's the main thing, you get to choose the people you want to work with. So that then you're leaving your house every day or you're going on Zoom or you're doing what you can and you're working with people that you know have the same mindset as you. There's no bullshit, there's no ego. It's just good work and fun, you know, and not taking yourself too seriously. But and take it's training. It, and, and it's training exercise. and it's taking the work yeah, seriously. Yeah. So that in six months time, after I've rehearsed this through Zoom or in person or whatever, that next year when everything's lifted or say, even May next year, for example, that's that's how far you'd be thinking to, to, to produce, to put on a play. And at that point then, I've rehearsed this play to its nth degree. Mm. So I get to a point where I'm like, they're like, only four weeks we can offer you. You're like, boom, take it. And then you're just polishing it. That's that's what I'm trying to do, but... And since like, you know, with, with all the lockdown and... Um, do, do you feel like the... You are not you, but your craft like is, uh, is has been valued like because there's been bailouts for every other industry or talk about bailouts, but like funding for the arts since this has happened, and it was probably the most affected. Certainly, theatre is, is one of the most thing most industries that's been affected by the virus and the lockdown. Like just stopped. Yeah. Sorry. So do I? So like, what what like do you think like? Um, do you think? Theater and and fil film will be the same eventually if it keep continues. But do you feel like it's the appreciation for it has grown, or or that it's been cast aside by whoever the powers that be because of? It's the same as it always is. It's it's underappreciated. It's undervalued. It's uh, you know it's the first thing to go. Mm. W whenever the economy falls asunder, the arts is the first thing to go. You know, you take, for example, like, like a theatre like The Gate. You know, that doesn't get the same funding as The Abbey. It's not the national theatre. So that relies on uh, companies like financial institutions, uh, Sponsors. legal firms and yeah. stuff like that. So if you're involved in a financial institution and you're being hit by a crisis, what's the first thing you're going to do? The arts. Stop, stop funding that, you know? But as we all know, I mean, it's, it's kind of, I feel like people have been saying this the whole time, but it's, it's truthful. Like, you know, during lockdown, what did we all do? We sat down and watched- Red books. Watched red books and- Series. Watched series and some of us went online and watched like the Abbey mm. shows or the National Theatre put on shows, the Old Vic put on shows. And, you know, that kept us, kept us going, you know? Um, so yeah, it is, it's, it's constantly been the same, but I don't think people expect or theatre makers or actors or directors or whatever expect anything different. But I don't think that should stop them from doing what, what they do or what we do is to keep going because the one thing that will always be there is that, you know, is the culture, is the arts and it's an escape from the normality of life or whatever. Yeah. So I still think that you need to go back and try and meet acting coaches all the time. You. I do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's something that you, I mean, like, you, you can't stop. It's like, it's, it's, a, like it's, like a, it's a muscle. You have to keep working it. You have to keep trying to improve on it. Um, yeah, because one of the things that surprised me was that he was working with, like, actors who you would, cons you would not assume what you would think, like, they've made it. What are they still training for? Yeah. Heath Ledger, Johnny Depp. Or the guys who you think like Oscar Isaac, and he's still on, still on, still on the set with them, got working through scenes with them. Yeah, that's it. That's and Javier Bardem. He still does. He still goes back to his act acting coach in Spain, mm. and Gandolfini. Gandolfini met his acting coach like nights before he had big scenes the next day in in Sopranos, because he, I don't know what it is. Does it go back to that thing where it's not trusting yourself or that someone else is going to come in and take your part. But if that helps you not be complacent and that helps you keep on trying to better yourself or improve every little bit of dialogue that you're trying to produce and make it real, well then why not? Mm. It's nothing but help, you know, and it's nothing but putting you in that moment and trying to make you better. But I think uh, one thing that kind of, I think you learn as you get older and I'm trying to kind of bring in the maturity you get as you get older, but originally when I got into acting, it was energy that really kind of, I, I felt like I had to prove myself. It was like, you know, I've got to give this energy. I've got to be there and present and, you know, 
and now it's like okay you have that energy and that's there and that comes out to you through your eyes and now be calm and let other things come out let that mm. other little nuance or emotion come out like and i hope that i get the opportunities in the next to show it to show it yeah to show that you know there's a different approach and a different side to me as an actor Cause, yeah because it's it is all about performing isn't it it's all about you know and i guess the process informs that but like even in that class with we did with jerry like a lot of the things that he would t tell us to do in preparation you could relate to to anything like i would always relate back to boxing just because that's that's yeah. my my field but like in terms of you know uh the repetition of it knowing the script inside out being in the moment action means no yeah breathing work yeah and letting you know letting go of it all once once you get there yeah um and it it is but like it is do you ever like where you've ever been on a set or it and it's just hard to be in the moment do you do you, do you, do you, oh, yeah. do you ever feel like that because yeah. there's all these external things going on around you and you might just be having a bad day or feel like you know suffer, you got who knows you got a blister on your foot and you can't stop thinking about it or yeah. whatever it is but yeah like just finding that moment and uh, definitely and i think like one thing i remember thinking about after i did that class with him and moving forward and trying to you know be better in the moment and all that kind of stuff but when i started acting like you go onto a set and you kind of you want to be friends with everyone you go oh there's the sound guy oh, there's yeah. the director and thing and you're like you know like it's hard and jerry says this like it's hard like forget about what people care think about you you know what i mean at the end of the day you're going in there to put something in the camera and you need to do the best you get forget about everyone else you know and like he says the thing and it, it can be misconstrued by a different younger person in regards to the fact that like that's yours that's yours he's yours that's yours they're, they're only a vision of you mm. they're only in, they're only they're only just looking at you it doesn't matter about not looking at you but they're just a version of you yeah. and what you say to me is only what I experience through you you know this kind of thing and it's like you own this you know and for me as a person I find that hard to do because ultimately you know I want to get on with people yeah. you know but I think you there is an element of it's not selfishness like because that's not the word but like there, it, it's kind of selfishness, but like you just have to f well, he forget called, about he everyone. What he calls it is protecting the process, isn't it? Is so, yeah, yeah. So you protect your process in terms of this is how I have to prepare, and I can't let anybody come in and sabotage. Even if they just want to be friends, or yeah. you know, take a photograph or whatever it is. Or you can understand when you see people like Christian Bale going insane <laughs> to a certain degree at the guy who moves behind the camera. It's, it's yeah. extreme, but like if you've got yourself to that point, yeah. and someone ruins it by moving around well then you know they've ruined the moment but it's hard to do that i think because ultimately for myself as a person you know i want to be amiable and i like to get on with people like that helps me but i think moving forward i've got to find that place where that doesn't matter anymore and the only thing that matters is the other person you're standing in front of and a tea director said that to me a few years ago when i was doing a play and he was like so you had this problem with my hands <laughs> I couldn't help but move my hands. And he was like, stop moving your hands. People are going to look at your hands. He was like, all you need to do is trust that you've learned your lines and then look at the other person and give them your full attention. And that's what people will be interested in. And then you will start to grow and you will start to see yourself as a better actor or feel yourself as a better actor. Forget about yourself. In some ways, I think it's the opposite of what I'm saying in some ways. But, you know, it's only, it's only you and the other person. Like last year, working on Angel of Darkness. Angel of Darkness, yeah. When, when will that be out soon on it's Netflix? Just, it, just, it, just, oh, it just aired in, in the States on Sunday mm. on TNT. But it was the first time I worked on a big production, um, like Hollywood style. Like Dakota Fanning. Dakota Fanning, Luke Evans, Evans and Luke Evans, Daniel yeah. Brühl. And I never worked on anything like, I, it'd be like this being empty and then building a whole city of New York like mm. back in the 1890s. And every day I come into set and I, I, I'd still, I'd, I'd look around and the tiles, everything. I was like, were these, were these put here? Like, and this Scottish guy was uh, 
Who's the props guy? Who's the, what's the fucking problem here? I've told you about ten times. The whole thing is built from the bottom for you. You fucking idiot. You ever built the bottom? You watched the Celtic game, did you? Four fucking nil. I don't know, whatever. But like, I couldn't. I couldn't appreciate that this was all built from scratch, yeah. and you were coming into it like, and it was bizarre. And it was like, what the fuck? Like, how, how did? It, how do you end up here? What, what do you do? And I remember like doing my first scene with these two kind of big actors and kind of being ready and getting doing a New York accent and kind of thinking about all that and pro getting ready and realizing that you know they're going to shoot they're going to give them a certain amount of time and then you get a certain amount of time but you have to be ready because you know they're not going to they're not going to spend an hour and a half working on you so you've got to be there you've got to be absolutely in the zone and I did mean, you know that before? Did no, you realise it? I made a mistake in, yeah. at the beginning. So your man actually, the, the, the props guy was, uh, so they, sh they shot them first. And so I was off camera coming into it. So I started getting into my rhythm and I was getting loose and it was great. Like, And then on a wide shot, I had had a cigarette in, as a character and I'd thrown it down and put it out and then gone to them. And during the actual shoot, I hadn't done that. And then when I went to shoot, when they turned the camera on me, uh, the prop guy was like, you remember you, you put your smoke out when you go up to you, you talk to them. I was like, fuck, I hadn't thought about that. Mm. So threw you a little bit. That threw me. Yeah. And that was my first take. And he said it to me. So I was thinking about doing that. And then I lost the moment. It wasn't until the second time that I was like, you know. So I, I basically broke concentration for that moment. And then, but also maybe I let, he was more concerned about the fact that he wanted his prop, you know, and that was yes. his job. So I let that kind of interfere where it didn't matter because ultimately they weren't gonna they weren't gonna look at that. Yeah. They were gonna look at them, look at me. So I should have just been like, whatever, boom. But it's that thing of like wanting to be nice and not wanting to be a prick or you know. So I learned from that point on that forget about that. That's the thing, yeah, forget yeah, about yeah, everyone yeah. else. Just focus on your own thing. And especially in that that So you, you take the did you do the first take? I did the first take and like I, I, I watched it back and they were like, it's great. And I was like, I, I kind of walked away going, ah, yeah. I really want another go at that. Yeah, but you didn't get one. I didn't get one. I got two. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't get another go and I was like, and they were like, oh, it's good. Like, it's good. Don't be worrying. Like, the, the acting, the dialect coach who I was working with a lot, she was watching and she was like, it's great. But you then kick yourself. But then you kick yourself and you go. Of course, you made the Scottish prop guy happy. I'm, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, that, that three or four sleepless nights. Three or four <laughs> sleepless nights for me. It's like what you were saying earlier on. It's like yeah. that kind of stuff does yeah. haunt you. It does, yeah. To a certain degree. Because you, you go, oh, why did I do that? Why didn't I just, why didn't I just focus there? What, why was I talking to that person? Why, like, you know, and it's that thing. You, and, and it is that thing. Forget about everyone else. Focus on the situation. And yeah. it's harder sometimes because you, you are enjoying the moment and you are enjoying the people or whatever. But just, I learned from that. Yeah. Just to keep it, keep it together and be ready because, especially in situations like that, because in big in films where you come in, and this is where I hope to kind of carve a career through playing characters and you know different parts in certain films or TV series. And you might necessarily be the lead. At some point, I'd love to be, but like you know, you might necessarily be. So like you know, you have to be on it. You have to come in. You might get two shots. Be there from the moment go. So do your rehearsals before you get there. Have your work done. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's part, like, that's, whatever, like, that's part of the job, isn't it? That's, like, that's your being on time. Like, the small things. Yeah. That, like, having your, having your work done, that when you turn up, you go in, you do your job, you're sufficient, you, you know, you, you're efficient, and then, oh, well, he was actually... He came in, he knew what he was doing, I didn't mm. think about you. Mm. Actually, I'm going to get him back because he, mm. he's on the ball. Like it's, it's all those small things mm. that will... And then it's been serious with the work and then it's been able to laugh mm. and not take yourself too seriously outside of that. You know, the levity with the gravity, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. trying to mix the two. But like definitely that scenario that I learned from that as well is that, yeah, be prepared, be sincere, be genuine, you know, don't take any bullshit either, you know, because you're going into a big pond and people are going to try and run over you. Run over you. So, yeah. like, be fucking, be strong, stand your corner. And there was a few times where you stand your corner with certain character stuff or something with someone else who you, it, it might shrivel and go, no, you're like, do you know what? 
And it's weird because you're like, I'm in this moment, I have every right to kind of discuss this with them, whether they're up there or not. You know, it's like, I, I can speak my mind. And mm. if you do that, then people will respect you. Yeah, be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself, yeah. But that's like, that was, it's a learning curve that you just, you go in, do your work, be sound Pl and be, be kind. If you could write the ideal character or take a character from a different film who you would have loved to have played. The Departed, Leonardo DiCaprio character. Really? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's an interesting choice, yeah. 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 Well, it's just one of those, it's, th it's that, uh, it's that, you know, duplicity. Double agent. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, we're, uh, because. But you, get, you will get a chance to play both sides, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But y we only really, s yeah, we see both of them, but it's, like, it's like being an actor, you know, he's, and we all do that. We all have different faces to different people, you know, mm. and that's the kind of character I'd love to, love to play, that duplicitous world, you know? So, uh, like, that's, this is totally removed, like, but in terms of duplicity, from going from Fran to going to playing David Drum in a, in a different, fit, like, that's, that's pretty much as duplicit as you could get, would you say? Is it though? <laughs> <laughs> Who's more honest? Do you know exactly, what I mean? Yeah, Fran is. Exactly, yeah. Fran is more honest. All the criminals and the cults and their ties. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not the men in tracksuits that ruin the country, as David Kerwin said. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's the yeah. men in suits. Yeah. But like, like Fran is being himself. David Drum is pretending to be someone else. Yeah. I was. It, 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 that was a. I'd love to play a character like that again as well, because that is duplicitous. Yeah. Because that is being, dressing yourself up to be, you know, seemed to be, you know, a good, honest, decent person. But underneath it all, you, you're actually ripping people off day by day. You know, you're ruining people's lives, whether you know it or not. Yeah, it's a funny, yeah. Uh... I definitely love to go back, and I have spoken to a, a writer about doing that, a character like him. Mm. Because it is... And you'd love to talk to him and ask him, you know, at the time, what did he, what did he think was going on? What did he think he was doing? But that was good fun. That was yeah. good fun. Also getting, uh, getting to put on a bit of weight. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves that. Yeah. I remember Stuart Carlin saying to me after season two, I did King of the Travellers. Yeah. And I went uh, training with, uh, with uh, John yeah. in Darndale and I dropped a bit of weight and then I met Stuart and at the Iftas and he was like, what do you do, man? <laughs> he's like, he's like, you got to put on weight. You, you can't. You, we're shooting Fran in like a month, and I was like, right, man, give us the money, and I'll go to Eddie Rockets. You know, <laughs> the, uh, well, you have done a lot of training, like physical training as well as whatever acting training, but f for roles and and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, not as much as I'd like to do in that regard. Yeah, it's, there's nothing better. Like I'd love to be like you're saying, like you know, get like a romper stomper role where or like you know Bronson. Have a and maybe I have to create that myself. Yeah, well, uh, even if it, I think if you have the, the role, then you'll have the motive. It's like yeah. me, I can't train. If I had a fight, I would train like a demon and get in shape and lose yeah. weight and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I'm not going to do that anymore. No. So unless you got that role to prepare for, yeah. well, you know it's a necessity. Yeah, day by day. Yeah. yeah. If you're not going to be believable, yeah. that's the thing. If you're not going to believe yourself, how can you convince other people? Yeah. Do you know? So what, what's, where do we go? Where are you, go? ideally, where do you see yourself five, ten years? Where, where, where do you want to go? <sighs> having you in Hollywood? Having worked with uh, really good directors, hopefully. Yeah. Having worked with the best of the best. That's, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wanted to do that, but. Not with Hollywood, no, but I just, I'd look, in, in five years, yeah, but look, I would love why to. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why, yeah, exactly, why, absolutely, why, yeah. Why have that? And it's the same thing about, you know, wanting to be nice and not be blah, blah, blah. Why not say it? Look, I want to be in Hollywood. Yeah. I want to be here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I need to start thinking like that. Yes. Maybe to take a, take a leaf out of your book. Yeah. Peter, thank you very much for joining Thanks, us. Man. A pleasure. An absolute pleasure. Nice indeed.